Hi friends, good morning. It's Tracy Brown. I hope you're having a good one. And as we get, I can't believe this week is almost over. It's Thursday. I'm doing this second video for the week. And um, we'll have we'll have lots more you know, in the next couple days. But just want to remind you that before I jump in this video that we have today and tomorrow, and that's it, for almost 60% off my non-diet and decoding skills self-study course. And so in it, there are at least I would say each module, now we're up to 13, um, in each module there's at least two hours, if not four to six hours of content, meaning audios, um, client sessions of mine, um, group sessions where I've recorded where we've got lots of people asking good, great questions, and basically if you are looking for anything around how to unpack people's hesitance, how to deal with people's I feel fat feelings, how to deal with the movement, which we're going to talk about in a second, and just learn how to be a nutrition counselor um, from a non-diet weight inclusive approach that sale is going to end tomorrow so if you're been kind of waiting for a while and been looking for something to do um, to increase your skills it's here and I if you have any questions about it please message me and I can share more and more details if you need them so let's jump into the video we often have people and I was in this category of people who was like I want to get moving but can't quite get there. And you're gonna hear all the things. Um, you know, the studio is really far, um, I have to pack clothes, um, and, and I don't ever, and I say those things not in a way of like people making excuses, they're not. There is just this, <laughs> we're working with different parts, basically. And there's gonna be a part of them that really has activities that they like to do. They might like to, um, walk, they might like to swim, they might like to do yoga, they might like to do things. They actually like it when they're doing it. It's just the getting there. And that's where you're going to see all the barriers. And that's going to be your job to unpack what those barriers are, what they mean, and really if that's something that they are in a place of readiness and willingness to really um, you address and take some risk with and that's what we're finding is it like and I'll give you some examples of like basically the layers you're gonna see um, but what we're really working with are other parts that have barriers to um, getting things going so for example you might have a client who you know and this is really common especially in people who are really really high functioning and have a lot going on is that they have a really busy job they probably are, are overworking on some capacity, or at least if they don't really have to overwork, they are. So it could be anywhere from somebody who is a busy executive to maybe the secretary that works for the executive, but she, but this person is so busy trying to meet every little whim of the executive that it feels like there's no space and no room and no time and no energy to move their body before or after work. And the executive might actually have the very same issue, <laughs> but they might be overworking to make the board happy or um, um, feel like they need to take on the extra special project and really do something big with it. And that's taking all their bandwidth. And so that's typically what we're working with people. It could be a mom who's like, I don't know, I don't wanna put my kid in the daycare, I don't want to, or the, the gym babysitting. Um, I don't know how to ask for, ask my mother-in-law to watch the kiddo for an hour so I can go do the thing. These are the kind of barriers you're gonna be seeing and those are the things you're gonna to need to help them unpack to get really clear what would happen if you ask for help? What would happen if you didn't do this? What would happen if you didn't meet everybody else's demand? Or even like you're trying to empathically know what somebody needs and therefore that's exhausting and that's not our job but that is the thing that's draining the energy and the motivation to be able to go on a walk on another lunch break and so there's all kinds of things you're going to start to really need to look deeper into and unpack besides you know it, we often do these like you know smart goals or we're gonna um and what would need to happen for you to um you know pack your clothes and then you go to the on-site, you know, uh, work fitness facility. If that's something you're feeling like you like to do that activity and that feels accessible in terms of like time or whatever, you might find that like 
it, it's not, or, or traffic, traffic can be a thing that people tell you. It's like really dig it into like, they don't often basically don't feel like they have the bandwidth for one more thing. And if they tell you that there, there's another thing of like, what is taking up so much time and energy? And it could really be their circumstances that it feels like it takes all of their energy to go to work, it takes all of their energy to care, take care of an elder, it takes all of their energy to care, care of their kids. And doing the emotional upfront of asking for more help is the barrier. So these are some things, if you really start looking at it, it's not because people don't want to move their bodies. I have a lot of people that sometimes they just don't know what they like. And those are kind of easier situations. We get to help them plan out. We might even do it with them if you're local with them. There's all kinds of things that can happen. And we can get some support on board to do the things with them, to have a good experience of it. But when you're in circumstances like I'm describing today, which is the majority of people I work with, it's actually having the bandwidth to go do, or having the spoons to go do the activity they might like, there's some things that need to happen in our lives to free up that space. Because, and it's usually mental and emotional. It's not gonna be as much like logistical for the most part. I mean, it might be. Um, and there might be some things they really love to do, but like they can't go drive two hours to the national park <laughs> and hike if that's the only thing they like to do. It could be that you help them plan the space to do that and that could be like their super joyful movement, but it could be you're also working on, well, what's a good enough movement you know, to keep yourself um, limber during the week so you don't get stiff from sitting at your desk all day if that's what their complaint is. So there's a lot of things, a lot of directions you can go with this. I just, I'm making this video for you all to get really clear that some of the reasons aren't what you might suspect, but that's the linchpin. If you can help them find the linchpin. Another example might be, um, you know, a lot of clients do get scared that if they get moving and it gets consistent, it's going to look like old diet culture behaviors of like being really consistent and I never miss a day and, and they're not in that mindset anymore, but behavior feels scary in their body that that might be. And so you're just going to be doing a lot of reassurance. How would they know if that's happening? How does that feel different than what they're doing now? Asking those body based questions because they're in their head spinning. Um, Another example might be um, being consistent reminds me maybe not of their behaviors, but of somebody else's behaviors in their life that they were just super serious about it and that was the right way to be and they're scared that they have to be this way too to be fit. Um, and there's like there's just a lot of coupling there that needs um, some tenderness with them to really um, make some meaning of what that is and if that's really true. So I hope this video opened up your your um, your mind and your eyes a little bit to like what actually needs to happen for exercise hesitant people to even get to the place. Now I've had clients that I've had to we went to do this work for almost a year to get to the place of like one day they just got ready and they and you were finally ready, but it took a lot of time to break down all of these. And they had every everything I've talked about today, they had some version of it, and just layer after layer after layer. And there were sometimes it's like I just need to shelf that movement, you know. So sometimes we would take months off of talking about it because it was just like I can't go there, I can't go there. They weren't ready, and that's okay. So course of a year, it doesn't mean that I wasn't I was talking about it every week. It was like we talked about it a little bit, shelf it, bring it back, and because it was really important to them, and it was actually a big part of um, them healing from overall like just the oppression of diet culture. So. I hope this video was helpful. There's a lot more I can say, but I don't wanna make it too long. But um, if you are catching in at the middle or the end here, thank you so much for coming live. Again, to, I just mentioned at the beginning of the video, today and tomorrow is my last two days of like this kind of this, this big um, kind of gifting of um, a big percentage off, I guess, of my non-diet um, counseling and decoding skills training. This training was something that um, was kind of the combination of my first four years in, as a nutrition therapist. Everything I learned in training and supervision, um, I just feel like it's a super, super, super strong um, two to six hours a week of content. It's, it's 12, actually 12 weeks plus a couple other bonus um, um, modules. So you're going to have, if you really spread it out, you could get through that probably in six months of like, 
unpacking skills and examples and um, forms and even some business building stuff like you know the um, community marketing mostly kind of th stuff but um, there's also some interviews from other people who are you all know and have been able to make successful online businesses as well so anyway there's a lot of content in there like I said um, case studies of my like client sessions I've done lots of interviews with other people um, group sessions I've done with other clinicians to just get people's questions and unpack and decode and um, you know, work on body image and food cravings and going through food journals there's lots of that so um, if you're interested in I will put the link below but like I said I'm gonna be offering this about it's 60% off the regular price for the next day or two. So if you're interested, let me know if you have more questions. All right. Thank you all so much. I hope you enjoy this um, exercise hesitance video. I would love to hear back from you if you practice some of these skills of unpacking a little bit more about what the real barrier is. And if it's not a logistical one, if it's not a desire one, then help them understand, well, what feels like is too far a reach for you? what would need to happen or how we need to feel to be able to um, take that next step to move in your body in a way that would feel good and it's not even I don't even label this stuff joyful movement it's about like here's something somebody they know is like they want to do and but here they are and we've got to help them build that bridge and it's not always about like creating this this plan of like you're gonna get here at this time you're gonna do that that might be what somebody really needs but for some people, it's like there's something really not as expected in the way that it's our job to help them see. All right, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.